guys, and welcome to another challenge video right here on Tetrabit Gaming, where we take on games in various unconventional ways. I've made plenty of Super Mario 64 challenge videos this past year, so I kind of wanted to shake things up this time. By playing its DS remake? Oh, and yeah, this isn't going to be a normal playthrough. There, much better. That's right, mostly everything is gone. With the help of Pants64, pretty much any object that is able to goes unrendered. This includes all static textures and objects like platforms, terrain, and yeah, just most of the levels. In short, as far as I understand, anything that's left is something that can move in the game. If you've watched my older videos, this is basically what I wanted to do with a textureless challenge back then, but due to the way the game works, it wasn't possible there, so this is probably as close as we'll ever get to playing the game with seeing as little as we can, without of course me blindfolding myself. Unlike the tree challenge I did though, all the objects are still present and do have collision, they're just invisible. The goal this time for this challenge will be to get the minimum 80 stars required to normally beat the game, all while trying to see some hidden oddities that we normally don't get to see. Anyways, I guess it's time to again torture myself with another grueling challenge, so let's get to it in 3, 2, 1. The intro cutscene begins, Mario jumps out, and then something we're not used to seeing in my Mario 64 challenges, Luigi and Wario jump out right after. They fight about who would look the weirdest without a mustache before they dash off to Peach's castle. Then after getting awakened by Lakitu here, we take control of Yoshi and our invisible adventure begins. Now although I started here with the bottom screen minimap, I quickly reversed my decision as I guess I like pain and I wanted to make this as difficult as possible. There we go. Then after consuming the rabbit here, we get the keys to the castle and already the difficulty was setting in. I couldn't see where the bridge was to get to the castle, so yeah, I might have fallen a few times just getting there. But after reaching the door and heading inside the dark void that was the inside of the castle, quickly we can make our way to the first course, bob -omb Nothing Field. As soon as I dropped in, it was really interesting to be greeted by two stacked cannons. The cannon below is the one that we can use in later stars, but it's cool to see that it's still loaded underground and out of our view even when we can't use it. It's not like this in regular Mario 64, as there, it's just empty. Anyways, without seeing the minimap, or you know, much of the level, getting around here was pretty difficult to say the least. Thankfully there were still trees and enemies to sort of guide me along, but not seeing where platforms start and end was already a big problem. I guess it's a good thing I've played Mario 64 so much, cause at least I can kind of remember the general layout of each course. After using these cannonball things as a guide, I slowly made my way up to the mountain here for the first boss fight with King bob -omb. I soon remembered that the first fight here is different than in regular Mario 64 since we can't grab him from behind as Yoshi. Instead, we have to slurp up his own children that he throws at us and then spit them right back. Three bomb spits later though and we have our first star of the challenge, let's go! Then since Koopa doesn't take too kindly to bipedal dinosaurs with long tongues, after taking a very long time to find Mario's hat to transform into Mario, the race with Koopa the Quick was on. Well, not for long I got hit and lost the hat and couldn't be bothered to go find it again, so I decided to just ground pound the Chain Chomps post here for star number 2 instead. Alright, time for a rematch bud. The race was more stressful as I couldn't go up the mountain as fast as I'd like, but thankfully after using the warp on the side of the mountain, I was still able to do it in less than a minute. Next is a new star added to this remake, and that's finding 5 silver stars around the course. Now normally, I believe the minimap on the bottom screen shows you the area these silver stars are found in, so without it, it wasn't as easy. Thankfully, I was able to see the shimmer from the stars from a distance, which made it a bit easier, but also the stars can be hidden in enemies, so I basically had to go around the stage and eradicate every Goomba in sight. But one Goomba genocide later, the star was obtained. After a quick swig of G Fuel, it was time for a rematch with King Babom, who somehow survived this? Yeah, I don't know. And this time, we get to do it the traditional way as Mario. A quick three throws later, and that's star number five. I don't think he'll be seeing a recovery from that one. Since we don't have the wing cap yet, and I don't feel like doing the red coins here, let's move on to the next course. 
Womps Nothing is up, and fortunately, most of the stars in this course are the same as they are in Super Mario 64. I've climbed up this mountain once or twice, so I guess you could say I have a pretty good idea of where everything is. Unfortunately, that didn't stop me from falling several times. Fighting King Womp was pretty easy, actually, as was climbing the tower. I tried to do the caged star with the owl like I usually do, and there's apparently something blocking it. My chat quickly reminded me that in this game, the star is actually encased in a cage that you can't just land on. This is the first instance of several in this game that Nintendo needlessly made a star harder to get than in the original. Let's just say I'm not a big fan of these changes. After falling off, once again, I decided to just skip that star altogether and instead just use the cannon to snipe the wall here for that star, as well as to get the other star on the side of the fortress. That's all I really wanted out of Womp's Fortress, so time now for cool, cool nothing. Falling through the invisible chimney, it was time to slide down the also invisible slide. While there were a few coins to guide me along, they didn't much help with indicating when to turn. But through trial and error, I made the first turn and then took a leap of faith, which surprisingly paid off as I somehow landed back on the slide and made it to the end for the first star here. Once again, Yoshi can't get the next star here since apparently we can't just slurp up the penguin to take it down. So kind of like taking a page out of Donkey Kong 64, let's go change characters and then backtrack once again here as Mario to try it again. I tried and failed, and <laughs> since I didn't want to keep getting Mario's hat at the bottom and teleporting back every single try, I decided I'd just come back to the stage once we unlock some more characters. Alright guys, now on to Jolly Roger Blank, where we get the pleasure of seeing the water plane, the sunken ship way in the distance, some rocks, and not much else. After debating the Unagi away from the ship, swimming around was pretty tough, as since everything was missing, I had zero frame of reference, so it was hard to orientate myself. Unlike the cage star from earlier, Nintendo actually made this star much easier, as you only need to touch one treasure chest in here, and jumping up to the box was also much easier than it is in Mario 64. So, thumbs up for that. Then, stealing the star from the Unagi and doing the treasure chest puzzle in the cave wasn't really all that bad. Honestly, the hardest star here was the one that we need to blast up to with the cannon. At first, it seemed like a straight shot, but there's actually a big invisible wall blocking us. So after much trial and error, I blasted and blasted until one time, I was able to grab one of the invisible stalagmites and then jump up to put star 14 in our pocket. Next, I wanted to try and get some of the castle secret stars, so I first hopped into the secret aquarium, which is now, uh... Just some floating, colorful squares. I swam, got the red coin star, not much to say here. The light was also now shining in the foyer, and it was honestly very cool to see it like this. Unfortunately though, we can't do that course without Mario yet, so we'll have to come back to it in a bit. Time now to open up the character swap room, so we can finally jump on into Peach's secret slide of nothingness. Just like the slide in Cool Cool Mountain, this slide was pretty tough to navigate, but thankfully, at least this one sometimes has some railings to prevent us from falling off. I was able to do it once after a long while, but the time was more than a second over the 21 seconds required for the second bonus star. I kept trying and trying, and I got close several times until finally I was just barely able to make it. Then, to keep on the theme of secret stars, since I was close, I decided to hop into the Sunshine Isles course. I haven't played this course in a very long time, so although I kind of remembered where some silver stars were, figuring out how to jump up to some of the platforms took quite a long while. Eventually, though, I got all five silver stars for yet another power star. I think it's about time we unlock Mario. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I always found it kind of strange that Peach has such a very large portrait of Mario in her room. Anyways, here, thankfully, I could see the moving platforms and Goombas, so I could kind of see where I could and couldn't jump, but I'd be lying if I said the invisible poison gas and falling off the stage wasn't frustrating. So far, I think this was the most difficult course to try and navigate. I did eventually get to climbing some poles and finally made my way down to Goom Boss. This fight was pretty rough, because it was really hard to stay on the track and not fall to the poison gas in the middle, or off the stage on the outside. Yeah, this is one of those places I wish had walls around the edges. 
But after spitting back three Goombas, the king had been slain, and the first character key is ours. Now that we can switch to Mario, let's uh, clean up some of the stars we missed. Tower of the Wing Cap was fine, just had to make sure I landed back on the invisible middle tower to unlock the red boxes and get the red coin star there as well. Then I tried racing the penguin down the slide in Cool Cool Mountain, and yeah, no. But now it was much less time consuming to try and bring the baby penguin to her mama, so there's another star as well. Now with 20 stars in hand, I think it's time to go pay our old pal Bowser his first visit. Interestingly, on the way there, the Peach portrait just faded out instead of transforming into Bowser. I guess instead of having them both fade in or fade out, Peach's portrait is the only dynamic one as it fades out, and Bowser's is just normally static there, which is why probably we can't see it here. Anyways, this stage doesn't have much for us to go off of, especially at the start. This probably would have been an absolute disaster to navigate, but it is extremely fortunate for us that there's a power flower here at the start. With it, Mario can inflate himself, just like a balloon, and skip half the stage up to this here goom, but... The last part here with the seesaws wasn't all too bad, and a few jumps later, it's time for the first fight with Bowser. The platform was invisible, sure, but this wasn't nearly as much of a detriment as it was with King Goomba since the bombs around the platform here were good indicators of where it ends, so falling off wasn't a big issue here. After having to annoyingly spin Bowser with the D-pad, the first Bowser fight is done and we have the key to the basement. Before heading on down though, I wanted to chase the boo into the courtyard. I executed 8 boos there for their red coins for another star, and then punched these blocks to hop into the invisible battle fort. Just like in the island bonus stage, here too I had to collect 5 silver stars. It wasn't as annoying though as I mostly just had to punch all the Goombas and blocks to reveal the silver stars and thankfully we can still see those. With that though, that's another star down. Big Boo's haunt is next and just like the boos that it contains, the mansion also disappeared. And honestly this made it even more creepier to navigate than normal. The doors are all still visible though, so it wasn't too tough to get around, I just had to really try hard to not fall down into the basement. Also I noticed Mario's ground pound hitbox isn't nearly as good as it is in Super Mario 64, so defeating all the boos and the big ones was slightly more challenging than what I'm used to. As an aside, if you noticed it earlier, there's another strange oddity that I found here when playing. In certain areas around here, a strange boo can be seen frozen inside what's normally a wall. It only happens to appear when transitioning from this door, when looking at it from here, and after defeating the lone boo in the room here with Mr. I. It appears to have something green under it, and the only thing that I can think of it being is Luigi's cap. At first I thought maybe this was the boo that appears with Luigi's hat being stored here before we normally get to see it, kind of like the cannon we saw earlier. But even after being able to get Luigi's cap, or even unlocking Luigi fully, this boo still appears. I'll probably look into this more whenever I eventually make a Lost Bits video on this game, but for now, I'd like to hear what you guys know, or if you have any theories as to why this Boo with Luigi's hat in its stomach is here stuck in the wall. Big Boo's merry-go-round wasn't anything crazy, but fighting the Big Boo on the balcony was pretty unsettling as I was really scared of falling off, but I managed to get it on my first try. The Secret of the Haunted Books is another star in this game that Nintendo updated. No longer can we just jump from across the balcony here since the star is now blocked off in a room. I mean, I guess this forces you to actually do the puzzle, but I don't know, I still prefer the original giving you the freedom to get the star faster if you're a bit more skilled. In any case though, now let's move on to saving Luigi in Big Boo's Attic. The stage was once again annoying to navigate, but being able to hear the directional audio cues to pick the right path was definitely helpful. There was a star later that was just out of reach, and chat let me know that apparently I need to come back here as Luigi to use the Vanish Cap ability to go through the wall. It was frustrating because I was so close, but I guess it is what it is. Oh yeah, and speaking of chat, quick very shameless plug as always, if you're interested in seeing me do these challenges live, be sure to follow me over on Twitch, where I occasionally do these. Link will be down in the description, and I hope to see you there. Anyways, after once again struggling to find the exact warp location to move on, time for one of my favorite sequences in the game. After it turns out that Luigi is actually in the mirror here, we get to fight King Boo. 
Not a very intense fight or anything, and it was much easier when King Boo was on our side of the fight, but after three hits, Luigi is rescued, and let me tell ya, that's probably the best thing to happen to us in this challenge. Luigi is faster, jumps higher in general, and can backflip into a slow spin, which is quite frankly pretty broken, in a good way of course. I don't play as Luigi in Mario games often, but in this game, Luigi is way better than the other characters, and I don't think it's even close. Anyways, still as Mario, I grabbed the Luigi cap in this stage here to use the Vanish cap ability in the attic to defeat the large Mr. I up there for star number 27. Things are looking pretty good. Now, let's go switch to Luigi for real this time. Here we can also see how Mario's model instantly swaps to Luigi's behind the door, and how the model kinda just hangs there for a bit before jumping out. Pretty cool. Anyways, next I wanted to go back to Cool Cool Mountain and do the Mario's Super Wall Kick star, not as Mario. Yeah, I guess you could say I'm kind of a badass. A twirly backflip later, and that star was as easy as can probably be here. Finally, now let's head on down to the basement area where we get to see more doors, some fire, and a single panel of the wall where we can jump into our next course, Shifting Blank Land. I think this stage has the least things we can see so far, basically just the enemies and the top of the pyramid. Getting the star from Klepto wasn't all that bad, sliding around on the shell to reach the top of the four pillars was pretty tough to figure out where they were, but eventually I got the hang of it to open up the top of the pyramid. With the top entrance open, I was able to get the star at the top pretty easily, and then I made my way down to Irock and fought the hands in the void for yet another star. And then last, and probably easiest for this course, I just grabbed the star on the side of the pyramid. Next up, Invisible Lava Land. Overall, the stars here weren't all that bad, actually. Getting around was again tough because I couldn't see where most of the platforms were as usual, but I could usually damage boost off the lava and land somewhere safe. And also Balloon Mario came in handy here and there. The red coin puzzle was whatever, but both bully stars were really something else. I swear the bullies hit harder in this game than in the original. And of course not seeing where the platform was made it extremely tough to see where to hit the bullies and where to stand so I wouldn't get bonked off either. Very frustrating, but eventually I was able to get both of those stars. I wasn't able to easily jump over the cage here to get the rolling log star, so I had to do it the old fashioned way, which, you know, wasn't actually all that bad. Inside the volcano was another story though, yeesh, what a nightmare. Thankfully a few coins and the fire blasts around the sides helped me get a small sense of direction, but not seeing the platforms here made this extremely difficult. Especially with jumping onto the poles. For one star it was a bit easier, but for the second I spent so long just jumping around and trying to blindly grab the pole. Eventually though, after a long while, I was somehow able to climb up for the second star as well. Never doing that again. And lastly for the stage, I had to ride around on the green shell to grab five more silver stars. The hardest part about this was to avoid any platform so I wouldn't bonk and lose the shell, which totally never happened. And with that star down, that's the first course of this challenge that I've completed, minus the 100 coin star of course. Nice. Moving along, now on to the Vanish Maze Cave, and this was probably the roughest course of the challenge yet. Since there are so many places that you can fall and instantly die, I absolutely hated this course. I eventually made my way down to the cavern area and grabbed the Wario Cap for our first time playing as Wario, and then I busted this large boulder for the star inside. Eh, sorry Bethaniel. And that is star number 40, which brings us to the halfway point. Let's keep pressing. After getting a freebie star from this idiot, and learning that the Watch Out for Rolling Rock star was removed from this game, which made me sad, the only other star I really felt like doing here was getting the bonus one right here. I'm definitely not feeling navigating the hazy maze or getting the 8 red coins, no thanks. Dire Dire Blanks is up, and surprisingly this course seems strangely more appealing this way. I don't know if it just felt more open and bright without the walls and such, but I don't know, it just looked really nice I thought. Boarding the sub was fine, then I got the treasure chest star, as well as the one in the cage with Luigi with ease. Now fellas, it's fire sea time. Similar to the tree challenge, getting around was pretty tough. Thankfully though, unlike what we saw in that challenge, this stage is actually doable. It took a lot of trial and error and remembering where platforms were and weren't, but overall it was doable. And it took a while, but here especially it was solidified just how much I hate this game's controls compared to the original. Then near the top, I also got the timed switch star pretty easily and finally jumped down into the invisible large pipe here to go square up against Bowser 2. 
Nothing crazy to say about the boss fight here since the platform didn't even disappear since it moves when Bowser slams it. One quick throw later and bing bing wahoo, with that we got Bowser key number 2. After switching back to Luigi and opening up the second floor, I wanted next to get one of my favorite stars in this game. It's the one where you get to use the vanish ability and go inside the mirror world and enter the door there in which a secret star is hidden. This secret star absolutely blew me away when I was younger, and I think it's just as awesome now. While we're here in this mirror land, let's go rescue Wa. This stage starts out with a slide, and that wasn't very fun to try and survive, so instead I just used Luigi's backflip twirl to basically skip it and get to the platforms here. From there, just had to climb these ice blocks, which thankfully were rendered, and before I knew it, I was up against Chief Chili. Basically nothing changes here minus not being able to see the background objects, so yeah, I beat him, and finally we get to play as Wario. Well, actually that's not a big cause for celebration, because Wario is the worst character in the game. When I was young, I almost exclusively played as him in this game, but I guess I never really noticed his weaknesses. He moves slow, he can't jump high, he may be a hell of a guy, but basically his only benefit here is punching the black brick blocks and being able to turn into Metal Wario. Now let's press on to Snowman's Land, or as it's known here, a lone wall texture in the void. Thank goodness for Luigi here, as I was able to abuse the hell out of his backflips to get around. It was starting to become a matter of not IF I could cheese my way up to a star as Luigi, but HOW. For example, I could cheese my way up to the top of the big snowman's head with ease. Next, the chill bully star was whatever, and then I had to head on into the igloo, which not only was it hard to get up to that area, but I also had to crawl around like an idiot for a while just to try and HOPE I find the entrance. Inside, I was again teased by a star just out of reach, but I first grabbed the 8 red coins here, and then came back for that star, which surprisingly wasn't all that difficult at all. After getting another freebie Toad Star, I switched back to Yoshi to return to Snowman's Land to breathe fire and get that one star trapped in the ice block to bring our star count up to 54. Invisible Blank World was another course that was really cool to see in this way. It was really nice to see more of the city in the skybox, which for those of you that don't know is a real city found in Spain, if I recall correctly. Anyways, the shocking arrow lift star was fine, and I guess I've played the stage a few too many times as getting to the star at the top of the town and getting up there to do the elevator star wasn't even all that bad. I guess most credit should be given to Luigi's backflips though. Then I swam through the void to reach the underwater town area and easily grabbed the caged up star once again with the help of Luigi's broken backflip. Tiny huge nothing is next, one of my favorite courses. I made easy work of the piranhas, got the star on the side of the mountain, and then went to fight Wiggler in his cave. Hard to see where I had to go, Luigi's backflip was good, yada yada, you guys know the drill by now. Now on to Tall Tall N yeah okay, I'm just gonna stop with the invisible jokes. This level was rough, it even put Hazy Maze Cave to shame. At first, I tried cheesing the slide skip, but once again, apparently Nintendo blocked that off here as well from the side, so I guess if I want that star, I'm gonna have to actually do the slide. Before the long trek up the mountain, first I backflip glided down to the lone mushroom, not bad. Now this is where the mess began though, I just finessed my way up the mountain as best as I could with the backflips, watching where these cannonballs were going, you name it. Half the time I had no idea what I was landing on, but I just rolled with it and kept backflipping. I fell quite a few times of course, but eventually, somehow, I made my way up to the top. Oh, and once wasn't enough, so I had to go all the way up AGAIN to catch the monkey there for another star. Thankfully this game is merciful, and after getting that star, we can now use Hoot to quickly make our way up to the top of the mountain no problem. And you know what that means, it's slide time once again. Yay. I didn't even want to bother trying to slide down the normal way because I value my life, so instead you already know we're gonna try and cheese this. I backflipped and floated down, which resulted in me getting too close to some of these smiley stars and moons. They're honestly really creepy. I also had to try my best to avoid the death barriers as I fell. I tried several times to no avail, and was ready to give up. Until one attempt, I saw a coin, and somehow I made it back to the slide. I died shortly after, but at least I now know there's hope. I tried and tried some more, until finally I somehow stuck myself on the slide long enough to get to the end, I think? 
After much jumping around to find the exit, I finally made it out to grab the star. That was not fun. Before moving on, I kinda wanted to just grab some Wario stars. So first I busted the blocks in the moat, and there I skipped the red coins, but instead got the other time star here as Balloon Mario. Then I went back to Dire Dire Docks to get the time switch star there under the black brick blocks, as well as the star inside the jet stream. And then similarly I went to the jet stream in Jolly Roger Bay. Now with 69 stars in hand, time to finally make our way up to the third floor and hop into TikTok Clock. Now this was easily the most difficult course in this challenge. As you can see, there's not much to see. And since the walls here make the stage appear completely dark, it was super tough to navigate. But once again, thanks to Luigi's backflip twirl, I was able to sort of make my way upwards. There's not too much more I can say here though, it was grueling and I'm super grateful for save states. I managed to get a star here, the time star there, and actually all seven from the stage, even the one at the top with the thwomp. And then after getting one more freebie toad star, last but certainly least is Rainbow Ride. For once though, I actually enjoyed this stage more than TikTok Clock. With the help of Luigi's backflips, once again, lots of cheese was to be had. After finding my way up this pole here, I could backflip to skip much of these segments here to get right to the tricky triangles for that star there, as well as the other star on the other side here. Next was the star on the cruiser, which after riding the magic carpet up and failing to get it the first few times, I figured out I needed to actually run through the wind as Metal Wario, and lastly then, I rode a magic carpet some more to get way up to the top of the imaginary big house here for star number 80. Alright, we suffered, but we got all the stars we need, so let's finally start the last trip up to the final Bowser fight. Then, like the other Bowser stages before this, at first it looked like very few parts were visible. And we couldn't play as Luigi here either, so I guess there goes that crutch too. Luckily though, many platforms were just culled out for being far away from the start, so although obviously much was still missing, there were enough things on the way to keep me on track. Honestly, the hardest part was this sideways moving platform thing since I couldn't see the obstacles in my way. Surely enough though, after a long trek, the pipe was in sight. Final stretch, let's go. The platform for the Bowser fight looked really cool here with the star in the middle missing. It's basically the opposite of what we normally get to see. Now I don't know what it is, if Bowser or the bombs are smaller here, or if I just suck, but I found the Bowser throws to be way more difficult than in Super Mario 64. There's one hit, two, and there it is. Bowser is down for the count until the next challenge. The Jumbo Power Star is ours, and let me tell ya, I'm very happy to be completing this challenge. Although this was a really difficult and lengthy challenge for me, for reference it took about seven-ish hours to beat, I'm really glad I got to revisit this DS version and relive some of the memories from my childhood, even though mostly everything was missing. Hmm, I bet Peach is really wondering where her castle went. Oh yeah, and let's give a salute to Luigi's backflips, which honestly I don't know how possible this challenge would have been without them. But anyways guys, that marks the end of this challenge video and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to smack that like button down below as it really helps me out a lot, and be sure to check out some of my other challenge videos by clicking on the card right here. Swing by my other social media things, which are all linked down in the description below. And if you want to support the channel, check out my merch over at tetrabitgaming.com or consider becoming the latest member of the Bit Club to get some nifty extra channel perks. Click on the join button below for more information. Anyways guys, thanks for tuning in, and I will see you in a bit.